Howdy, folks, and welcome to another day in the Milky Way. Tonight, we got a great show for you. We're going to be doing the alien interview. Uh, another another episode of alien interview. Uh, I was going to do some other stuff tonight. Uh, I was thinking about reading some alien stories, but you know, a wise man said, just go with the alien interview and finish that up. Anyway, it's nice to be back with y'all. I've been on vacation. Um, for the last week, um, took a little break, had some recorded shows. I hope you all enjoyed that stuff. And uh, tonight we are live, live, live. But we're going to take you uh, right over to the alien interview, and I'm going to get on where I left off last time. Um, but I appreciate each and every one of you for being here, taking your time and effort to be here because. It wouldn't be a good show without you. So I hope you all enjoyed um, your 4th of July weekend and celebrated with that. And um, if you don't know anything about 4th of July or why we are have our independence, uh, go over to Lucky Stone's channel. I'm going to post it in the comments. He did a great reading of in uh, the... the uh, uh, the independence, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, let me think. I got too much on my brain. But anyway, thank you all. Uh, go over there, check that out. Uh, the link is in in the comments. Um, with that, we're going to get into the alien interview. What is it? You know, they've been talking more and more about aliens in uh, the news lately. And that's why I think it's important that we go to this book, The Alien Interview, and check it out and see what it's all about because it maybe it'll give us a little insight of what's really going on in this world because you, you just don't know do i know no nobody really knows i think we've all been in the dark way too long um as usual um way too long and it's up to us to go out and find the truth ourselves you know, it could be right around the corner. Uh, I did see my own, uh, um, if I can find it now, uh, I did see my own um, uh, uh, UFO this last weekend uh, or during 4th of July. And if I can find it, I will put that up here somewhere. And, uh, but anyway... I did did see a UFO while they were shooting off fireworks and everybody was so pre-distracted with everything in the world going on. I looked up into the sky and I said, I see something that doesn't look like it looks like something. And if I can find it here, we will play it. Um, but it was. It was a glowing, it was a glowing something, and I don't know what it was, but uh, it's right here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Let me find it. Do, do, do. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, my own alien interview business will be right here. Just give me a second, and I'm going to share this with all of you before we get going, and then uh, you can see what i seen. For my own alien stuff. So this is a real treat because I seen the aliens myself. There we go. And let's play it. That is what I seen. I don't know what it was. I zoomed in the best I could. And there it was. And it wasn't fireworks. It was just there. And it was moving around. It's kind of doing its thing. And now it's kind of stopped on me. Wonder why. Huh. Let's try this again. Okay. I don't know why it stopped. You know, anyway, that's, that's kind of one of those things. Let's try it one more time. 
see if it'll play again. Now my whole screen is froze up. But anyway, that is what I've seen. Let's see if I can get it. Okay. Seems like, okay. Let's try this again. Okay, here we go. Let's play it one more time. Some kind of UFO thing. Maybe. Hmm. It's just floating there. Well, whatever it was, it was there. Hmm. How about that, people? My own alien <laughs> encounter. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Anyhow. I hope you all enjoyed that. Remember, it was 4th of July. And if you don't know about 4th of July, go over to Lucky Stone's channel um, and check out his reading of the Declaration of Independence. I've already told you this, but nobody was in the chat. So anyway, uh, I'm putting that in the chat. Uh, there's a link to it. Go check it out. Great reading. Thank you, Lucky, for doing that. Uh, really wonderful. And with that, I'm going to get right on with the read of the alien interview because that's pretty interesting, too. I hope you all enjoyed my video of I don't know what it was. It was something and it was right out my back door and I had the smarts to video it and notice that it wasn't just something and it's, you know, wasn't a star it wasn't any of those things. Uh, it wasn't a fireworks. It stayed up there for quite a while, and then it just gone. Gone as fast as it uh, was there. Anyway, okay, let's get on with the show, because that's what I'm sure you're all waiting for. Well, maybe. Okay, let's continue where we left off. Um. Anyway, thank you. Well, thank you, Michelle Canham Free. Uh, Max Vision. Hope you enjoyed that too. Um, yes. Anyway, yeah, look at that. Great capture. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Max Vision's in the house. Scotty Boy is in the house. And Chloe. Chloe, thank you. And Lucky Stone. Thank you for showing up tonight. It's been good. Remember, go over to Lucky Stone. Check out his reading of Declaration of Independence. Great read. Uh, link is in the chat. So there you go. Let's start out where we left off. Genesis. Okay. Their Genesis story also mentions that Yahweh designed biological bodies to live for 120 years on Earth. Biological bodies on the most uh, Sun Type 12 Class 7 planets are usually engineered to last for an average of about 150 years. Human bodies on Earth last only about one half as long. We suspect this is because the prison administrators have altered the biological material of the human bodies on Earth to die more frequently. So that the ISBs who inhabit them will recycle through the amnesia mechanism more frequently. Hmm. Well, interesting. Hey, and if you all don't know what I'm reading, um, hang on a second. Let's see here. If you don't know what I'm reading, I'm reading from this book here, Alien Interview. Now, if you'd like a PDF of this, I have it. Just let me know. Um, and uh, if you want to buy the book, it's usually on eBay or Amazon. It's around 20, 25 bucks. Um, okay. Anyway, there we go. Uh, let's go back to the story.
Okay, it should be noted that much of the Old Testament was written during the captivity of the Jews who were enslaved in Babylon, which was heavily controlled by priests of the old empire. The book introduces a false sense of time and a false concept of the origin of creation. And that is probably why we can never figure it out. Is it 6,000 years or 6 million years? Is it 600 years? Hmm. Okay, well, either way, it doesn't never, it never makes sense. Hey, Max G's in the house. Thank you for coming. Hey, good to see you here. You missed the uh, the UFO I caught, Max G. I will have to play it at the end of the show. Okay, or you have to rewatch one or the other. Okay, here we go. The serpent is the symbol of the old empire. It appears in the beginning of their creation story, or as the Greeks say, Genesis and causes the spiritual destruction of the first human beings who are metaphorically represented by Adam and Eve. The Old Testament, clearly influenced by the old empire, forces give a detailed description of the Isbees being induced into biological bodies on earth. This book also describes many of the old empire brainwashing activities, including installation of false memories, Maybe that's why we don't know who we really are. Lies, superstitions, commands to forget, and all manner of tricks and traps designed to keep Isbees on earth. Most importantly, it destroys the awareness that humans are immortal spiritual beings. Hmm. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. 580 BCE. The Oracle of Delphi was one temple in a network of many Oracle temples. Yep, obviously there was plenty of temples out there. We can go through history. It seemed like every society had a temple. Each temple was a communication center. The old empire priests designated a local god for each temple. Each of the temples in this network were located at precisely five degrees of latitude intervals from the capital city of Thebes throughout the Mediterranean area as area as far north as the Baltic Sea. The shrine served, among other things, as a grid housing electronic beacons, later called uh, um, Alphemius stones. Alphemius stones? Anyway, the grid arranged uh, arrangement of oracle sites can only be seen from miles above the earth. The original network of electronic communication beacons were disabled when the priesthood was dispersed and were replaced by carved stones. The symbol of the old empire priesthood is a python or a dragon or a serpent. Isn't that kind of what China has? Doesn't China have serpents as, you know, the big dragon? Hmm. Okay. And they are like the oldest empire. The symbol of the old empire priesthood is a python, a dragon, or a serpent. It is called the earth dragon. At Delphi, which is always represented in sculpture and vase paintings as a serpent. In Greek mythology, the guardian of Ophiuchus stone at the temple of Delphi was an oracle whose name was Python, the serpent. She was an Isbe who was conquered by a god named Apollo. He buried her under the Orpheus stone. This is a case of one god setting up his temple on the grave of another. This is very accurate enthusiasm for the domain force that detected and disabled the old empire, the temple network on earth. It was one of the fatal blows to the old empire force in the solar system of earth. 559 BCE. The commanding force officer of the Domain Battalion, who was lost in 5965 BCE, was detected and located by a search party sent to Earth from the Domain Expedientiary Force. He was incarnated as Sirius II of Persia during this time. A unique system of organization was used by Sirius II 
and the members of the battalion who followed him from India through his progression of human lives on earth. In part, it enabled them to build the largest empire in the history of the earth to that date. The domain search party who located him traveled around the earth searching for the lost battalion for several thousand years. Boy, it must be nice to have thousands of years to go search. Um, the party consisted of 900 officers of the domain, divided into teams of 300 each. One team searched the land, another searched the oceans, and a third team searched the space surrounding Earth. There are many reports made by various human civilizations concerning their activities, which humans did not understand, of course. The domain search party devised a wide variety of electronic detection devices needed to track the electronic signature or wavelength of each of the missing members of the battalion. Some were used in space, others on land, and special devices were invented to detect ISBEs underwater. One of these electronic detection devices is referred to as the Tree of Life. The device is literally a tool designed to detect the presence of life. Wow, we've seen those pictures of the Tree of Life many times. Which is an ISBE. This was a large electronic screen generator designed to permeate wide areas. To the ancient humans on Earth, it was reassembled a sort of a tree or resembled. Hmm. Since it consists of an interwoven lattice of electronic field generators and receivers, the Atlantic electronic field detects the presence of ISBEs, whether the ISBE is occupying, uh, occupying a body or if it is, if it, they are outside of a body. I wonder if I have, I wonder if I got a picture of that. You know, that would be good if I, I did. Do I have a picture of the tree? Do I, do I, do I, do I? Let me check. Let me check, people. You know, sometimes I have these things. Where I would have it, I, I don't know. Um, it would be... I have tons of pictures. Boom, boom, boom. Tree of life. Where would I find the tree of life? Oh, come on. You know, when you want to find these things, then you can't. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Um, let me see. Um, where would I have that? I got one of those. Let me think. Think, think, think. Uh, oh, arc. Oh, uh, arc. maybe I got it here. Do you, do I got the tree of life? No, not there. Um, anyway, anyway, you all know what the tree of life looks like in those pictures of the, um, I'm trying to find one that shows uh, the tree of life and the Anunnaki working on the tree of life and, and, and how they stand around it. And it looks like this, this thing. You know, you know the one I'm talking about. Um, it has the branches on it, and it has uh, things interwoven inside it. Um, let's see if I can find it. Doo, doo, doo. I know I have one, uh, but finding it is oh, Solomon's wisdom. Maybe it's one of these. Nope, not there. But hmm. Anyway. When you want to find these things, they just, they're just not in the space. Huh. Do you, do you, Ark of the Covenant? No. No. Anyway, Atlantis. Maybe it's in that one. I got plenty of these things, uh, but not that one. How is it that I do not have that one? You know? But it could be. Anyway, the important part is that they were searching for it. 
and we uh, didn't, don't even know uh, what we're looking for. That's that's the problem anymore. Is um, it's there? Do do do. Indian art. Nope, nope, not that either. Oh, I'm spending way too much time on this, ain't I? Hmm. But it's just the point that it's there. And now that I want to find it, I can't find it. I guess that's what happens when you try to do all of this at one time. Oh, Tree of Life. There we go. I found it, people. There we go. There's the device we're looking for. Okay. I hope that you appreciate my hard labor on finding this. Because that was a hard one to find. I just went back to see the photo. I saw something like that two or three days ago. Ooh. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, uh, anyway, this is the one I was looking for. But look at that. Doesn't that now, it, you know, if you were back in the day and you were drawing a picture of a machine you didn't understand, that's probably what you would draw. You know, maybe it, it looks like that. Tree of Life Assyrian or the Assyrian Homo, the sacred tree. You know, I mean, we, we, we've been calling it a tree, but maybe it's a device. You know, it's a device. Scotty boy, I am not mentally drained. I've, ha I've been on vacation. I'm just not back in the groove. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'll have to get on to that. Okay, I don't know if I can do this. It won't let me do it uh, from this side. Okay, well, I hope you all enjoyed that part. I am going to get rid of that. We'll go back to reading. A portable version of this detection device was carried by each of the members of the domain search party. Then... Stone carvings in Samaria showed winged beings using pine code shaped instruments to scan the bodies of human beings. They are also shown carrying the power unit for the scanner, which are depicted by stylized baskets or water buckets. There they go with the buckets, not a handbag, but a bucket being carried by eagle headed winged beings. Well, maybe that's the one. Okay, we're going to stop sharing for just a second because I bet you. That's the one that, oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Tree of life. Okay, thanks, Lucky. This, share screen. There we go. There it is. The tree of life with the winged beings. That's the one they're talking about. Look at that. Go figure. How in interesting is that? Okay. Well, we're going to go back to stop sharing. And now that you got the idea and we got the right one, we're going to get back to a reading of the book. Okay. You know, we got to do our investigation while we're reading. Because what else would reading do if you didn't actually learn anything you know you got to learn as you go you can't just memorize it that's the whole point okay okay members of the aerial unit of the domain search party led by our uh, hura mazda was uh, were often called wing gods in the human interpretations throughout the persian civilization there are a great many stone relief carvings that depict winged spacecraft that they called a farvahar. Hmm. What happened to the Vamanas? Uh, members of the aquatic unit of the domain search party were called oians or local or by the local humans. Stone carvings of so-called oians are oans are shown wearing silver diving suits. They lived in the sea and appeared to the human population to be men dressed and looked like fish. Some members of the Lost Battalion were found in the oceans inhabiting the bodies of dolphins or whales. Now we've all seen those pictures of the fishmen 
you know, talking, you know, carved in the stone. And I'm, I'm sure you all know which ones those are. And I know I got a picture of that somewhere, but I ain't going to spend a whole lot of time on it because our time is slipping away, slip, slip, sliding away. Um, okay. On land, the domain search party members referred to as the Anunnaki. There you go. That's where we get the Anunnaki by the Sumerians and the Nephilim in the Bible. Of course, their true mission and activities were never disclosed to Homo sapiens. Their activities have been purposely disguised. Therefore, the human stories and legends about the Anunnaki and the other members of the Domain Search Party have not been understood and were badly misinterpreted. In the absence of complete and accurate data, anyone observing a phenomenon will assume or hip, hip, hypothesize explanations in an attempt to make sense of the data. Therefore, although mythology and history have been maybe based on factual events, they are likewise full of misunderstood and misinterpreted evaluations of the data and embellished with assumptions, theories, and hypotheses, which are false. Hey, sounds like nowadays when you watch TV. You know, they make up whatever they want and they fill in the blanks and you believe them. No, we don't even know what's true. The space unit of the domain expedientary force are shown flying in wing discs. This is an allusion to the spiritual power of the Isbees, as well as to the spacecraft used by the domain search party. The commander of the lost battalion, as serious too, was an Isby, who was regarded as the Messiah on earth by both Jews and Muslims. In less than 50 years, he established a highly ethical and humanitarian philosophy, which prevailed all of Western civilization. Western civilization. Wow. Yeah, because if you're smarter than everybody else, everybody else is going to either follow you or they're going to kill you. One or the other. You know, and if you're just mediocre or under the weather... They call you Scotty Boy. <laughs> um, his territorial conquest, organization of people, and monumental building projects were unprecedented before or since. Such sweeping accomplishments in a short period of time could only have been achieved by a leader and a team of trained officers, pilots, engineers, and crew members of a unit of the domain, acting as a team who had been trained and worked together for thousands of years. Although we have discovered the location of many of the Isbees in the Lost Battalion, the Domain has been unable to restore their memory and return them to active duty as of yet. Wow. Okay. But, of course, we cannot transport Isbees who are inhabiting biological bodies into the space stations of the Domain, since there is no oxygen in our aircraft. Also, we do not maintain life support facilities or biological entities there. Our hope has been to locate and rekindle the awareness, memory, and identity of Isbees of the Lost Battalion. One day, they will be capable of rejoining us. Isn't that usually the way it goes? The last remnant of the old empire pyramid civilization is Technotiklan. The Aztec name means place of the gods or where men were transformed into gods like astronomical configuration of the giza pyramids in egypt the entire complex is precise scale model of the solar system that accurately reflects the orbital distances of the inner planets the asteroid belt jupiter saturn uranus neptune and pluto since the planet uranus has only been discovered with modern Earth telescopes in 1787 and Pluto not until 1930. It is apparent that the builders had information from other sources. Yeah, did you guys know that the uh, the pyramid is like got the dimensions and the length, the width, and things you can measure the distance from there to the sun. Uh, the pyramid, if you measure it off, has the uh, you know, the thing of Earth, you know, the, the measurements of Earth. It's really kind of cool. Yep. And Scotty Boy says, well, that explains why. <laughs> yes, I did. 
you know, I got to have somebody to zinger. Anyway, here we go on with this because it's just fun to think about because anybody building the pyramids back in the day uh, had to have space travel. They had to be able to see, you know, the circumference of the earth, the parallel lines. They had to have some kind of space travel uh, or ability to see from the air to build the pyramids. There's just, that's the only way uh, our, uh, to describe it. There's no other way to do it. Oh, yeah, I got a really nice hat on, you know. I got that on a Corona hat on. <laughs> I love that thing. Um, okay, back to reading. A common element of the pyramid civilization around the earth is the constant use of the image of the snake, dragon, and serpent. This is because the beings who planted these civilizations here want to create an illusion that the gods are reptilian. This is also a part of the illusion designed to perpetuate amnesia. The beings who place false civilizations on earth are isbies, just like you. Many of the biological bodies inhabited by isbies in the old empire are very similar in appearance to the bodies on earth. The gods are not reptilians, although they often behave like snakes. Okay, 1034 and 1124 AD. Now we're getting there. The entire Arab world was enslaved by one man, Hassan Ibn Azashaba. I think I mispronounced that. Uh, probably a lot. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll say it again. Hassan Ibn Alashamba. Shaba? Well, well, anyway, he's got a big long name. He, we'll just call him Hans. The, the old man of the mountain. He has established the Hashanabshin, who operated a part of the Mohammedism, which controlled by terror and fear much of India, Asia Minor, and most of the Mediterranean, the basin. They became a priesthood that used an extremely effective mind control mechanism and extortion tool that enabled the assassins to control the civilized world for several hundred years. Well, you know what? They're back and they got a better tool and it's called television and the internet and a cell phone. <laughs> That's right. And Nina says... Next Sunday, Robert and I will start out a new reading and discussion series called Horns of the Goddess. Yes. Oh, since we're doing that, Horns of the Goddess right here. We'll, me and Nina will be doing that next week. Horns of the Goddess. Check it out. I'm going to be doing some shows about that, uh, what it's about. It's about, something about the Druids. I've been reading a little bit about it. So, um... To refresh everybody's memory, I'm going to do a little bit of druid work this week. And we're going to talk about druids. Because, hey, who doesn't love druids, right? Mm. Do you know what druids are? Well, we're going to figure it out. Well, maybe uh, we'll find out here in the alien interview. Okay, their methods was simple. Young men were kidnapped and knocked unconscious with harshness. They were taken into garden filled with beautiful black-eyed horse hours in a Harlem decorated with rivers of milk and honey. The young men were told that they were in paradise. They were promised that they could return and live there forever. If they sacrificed themselves as an assassin of whomever they were commanded to kill. The men were knocked out again and shoved out into the world to carry out the assassination mission. Meanwhile, the old man of the mountain sent a messenger to the to the cafe or wherever wealthy ruler from whom they demanded payment, demanding camel loads of gold and spices, incense or other valuables. If payment did not arrive on time, the assassin would be sent to kill the offending party. There was virtually no defense against the unknown assailant who wanted to Nothing more than to carry out his mission, be killed and return to heaven. Wow. Suicide bomber, basically, right? Only he didn't use a bomb. He was um, he was on a suicide mission. 
this is a very crude example of how simple and effective a brainwashing and mind control operation can be when it is used skillfully and forcefully. It is small scale demonstration of how the amnesia mind control operation is used against the entire ISBE population of Earth by the old empire. See, we really don't know what the heck is going on. Okay, 1119 AD, the Knights Templar, who don't love the Knights Templar, um, was established as a Christian military unit after the First Crusade, but quickly transformed into the basis for an international banking system to accumulate money to conduct the agenda of operatives for vistages of the old empire on Earth. 1135 to 1230 AD, the domain expeditionary force completed the alienation of the remaining remnants of the old empire space fleet operating in the solar system around Earth. Unfortunately, their long-established thought control operation remains largely intact. 1307 AD, the Knights Templar was disbanded by King Philip IV of France, who was deeply in debt to, or VI of France, who was deeply in debt to the order. He pressured Pope Clement V to condemn the order's members, have them arrested, tortured, them into giving false confessions and then burn them at the stake in an effort to erase his debt by seizing all of their wealth. Hey, that's the way you get your money back. A majority of the Templars fled to Switzerland where they established an international banking system, which secretly controls the economy of Earth. Hey, it still does today. Old empire operatives act as an unseen influence on the international bankers. The banks are operated covertly as an on-combat provocateur to covertly promote and finance weapons warfare between the nations of Earth. Warfare is an international mechanism of control over the inmate population. The purpose of the senseless genocide and carnage of the wars financed by these international banks is to prevent the ISBEs of Earth from sharing open communication, cooperate together in activities that might enable ISBEs to pro prosper, become enlightened, and escape their imprisonment. Wow, that makes total sense. Hmm. Scotty says, I miss Dolores... What, did you know her personally? Come on now. Well, you can always watch reruns. Okay. Anyway, chapter 10, a lesson in biography. I don't know. We'll get, we'll do try to get through this one. Okay. Her personal, this is her personal note. My dis debrief was also taped, recorded as a black backup and an add, clar add clarification to the stenographic notes. I debriefed immediately after my interview so that everything that was said was still fresh in my mind. When I recounted these stories to the gallery stenographer, I was still reeling a bit. The perspective on Earth's history from a viewpoint of view of the domain is very strange to say at least. I wasn't sure if my uncomfortable feelings came from being disoriented or if it came from being reoriented. Either way, I felt unsteady and confused. Yet at the same time, there was a ring of truth to it. I was at, elated and incredulous at the same time. The stenographer looked uh, as, as, as anic at me more than a few times as she recorded the history lesson I passed on to her. I'm sure she thought I was losing my mind. Maybe she was right. However, in my mind had been filled uh, hypnotic suggestions and false memories by the old empire. As Ariel suggested, perhaps losing my mind would be a good idea. I didn't have much time to ponder my own personal thoughts about these things as at, a at the time. It was my duty to get all of the information I could from Ariel and pass it on to the stenographer, who soon as Ariel was finished, my job was not to analyze the information, just report it accurately as possible. The analyst would be left to, to men in the gallery or whomever else was receiving copies of the transcript. 
I also delivered a list of books and materials requested by Ariel to the agent in the gallery room so that these could be gathered and delivered to Ariel. Each night after I left Ariel, she spent the rest of the night reading or scanning the material which had been delivered to her. The members of the gallery each received a transcript of the stenograph dictation to study, each looking for information that was of interest to them. In the morning after breakfast, I reported back to the interview room to continue my interviews or lessons with Ariel. Okay, top secret. Who doesn't love top secret? Back to the transcript. The origins of this universe and the life of Earth, as discussed in the textbooks I have read, are very inaccurate. Since you serve your government as a medical personal personnel, your duties require that you understand biological entities. So I am sure that you will appreciate the value of the material I will share with you today. The text of books I have been given on subjects related to the function of life forms contain information that is based on false memories, inaccurate observations, missing data, unproven theories, and superstition. For example, just a few hundred years ago, your physicians practiced bloodletting as a means to release supposed ill humors from the body in an attempt to relieve or heal a wide variety of physical and mental afflictions. Although this has been corrected somewhat, many barbarisms are still being practiced in the name of medical science. Yeah, there you go. Mm, well, at least they don't do bloodletting that much anymore. Um, let's see. In addition to the application of incorrect theories concerning biological engineering, many primary errors uh, that earth scientists make are the result of an ignorance of the nature of relative importance of isbes as a source of energy and intelligence which animate every life form although it is not pri a priority of the domain to intervene in the affairs of earth the domain communications officers office has authorized me to provide you with some information in the effort hey this might be important pay attention people the office has authorized me to provide you with some information in the effort to provide a more accurate and complete understanding of these things and thereby enable you to discover more effective solutions to unique problems you face on Earth. The correct information about the origins of biological entities has been erased from your mind as well as from your minds of your mentors. In order to help you regain your mem own memory, I will share with you some factual material concerning the origin of biological entities. I asked Ariel if she was referring to the subject of evolution. Ariel said, no, not exactly. You will find evolution mentioned in the ancient Vedic hymns. The Vedic texts are like folk tales or common wisdoms and superstitions gathered throughout the systems of the domain these were compiled into verses like a book of rhyme, rhymes for every statement of truth the verse contains as many half truths reversals of truth fistful imagine imag imagings blended without qualification or distinction the theory of evolution assumes that the motivational source of energy that animates every life form does not exist it assumes that an inanimate object, object or a chemical cohesion can suddenly become alive or animate accidentally or spontaneously, or perhaps an electrical discharge into a pool of chemical ooze will magically spawn a self-animated animated entity. Hey, Darwin's theory all over again. There is no evidence whatsoever that this is true, simply because it is not true. Dr. Frankenstein did not really resurrect the dead into a marauding monster, except in the imagination of an Isby, who wrote the fictitious story, One Dark and Stormy Night. No Western scientist ever stopped to consider who, what, where, when, and how this emanation happens. Complete ignorance, denial or unawareness of the spirit 
as a source of life force required to animate inanimate objects or cellular tissue is the sole cause of failures in Western medicine. Is that not so true? Yeah, we're going to be Dr. Frankenstein. We're going to make the monster come to life. Just sew those body, dead body parts together and we'll electrocute it and it'll jump up to life. <laughs> Maybe I should be Frankenstein for Halloween. <laughs> okay. In addition, evolution does not occur accidentally. It requires a great deal of technology, which must be manipulated under the careful supervision of ISBEs. Very simple examples are seen in the modification of farm animals or in the breeding of dogs. However, the notion that human biological organisms evolved naturally from er earlier ape-like forms is incorrect. No physical evidence will ever be uncovered to sustain the notion that modern humanoid bodies evolved from are on this planet. And they're still looking today and they can't find anything. Yep, I don't think they'll ever find anything because there's nothing to find. The reason is simple. The idea that human bodies evolve spontaneously from primordial ooze of chemical interactivity in the dimmest mist of time is nothing more than hypothetical lie instilled by amnesia operation to prevent the real recollection of the true origins of mankind. Factually, humanoid bodies have existed in various forms throughout the universe for trillions of years. This was compounded by the fact that Vedic hymns were brought to Earth 8,200 years ago by the domain, expedientiary force. While they were based in the Himalayan mountains, the verses were taught to some of the local humans who memorized them. However, I should note that this was not an authorized activity for the crew of the domain installation although I'm sure it seemed like an innocent diversion for them at the time. The verses were passed along verbally from one generation to the next for thousands of years in the foothills or eventually spread throughout India. No one in the domain credits any of the material in the Vedic hymns as factual material, any more than you would use Grimm's fairy tales as a guide for rearing children. However, on the planet where all of the Isbees have had their memory erased, one can understand how these tales of fantasies could be taken seriously. Unfortunately, the humans who learn the Vedic hymns verses pass them along to others saying that they came from the gods. Eventually, the content of the verses were adopted verbalism as truth. The euphemistic and metaphorical content of the Vedic Veda were attempted accepted and practiced as dogmatic fact. Well, isn't that true? You know, you make up a thing and the next thing you know, it's real. And the bigger the lie, the bigger the truth it'll become. The physio physiology of the verses were ignored and the verses became the genesis of nearly every religion practice on the planet Earth, especially Hinduism. An officer, pilot, and engineer of the domain, I must always assume a a very a, assume a very pragmatic point of view. I could not be effective or accomplish my mission if I were to use physiological dogma or rhetoric as my operations manual. Therefore, our discussion of history is based on actual events that occurred long before any Isbees arrived on Earth and long before the old emperor empire came into power. I can relate part of this history from personal experience. Many billions of years ago, I was a member of a very large biological laboratory in a galaxy far, far, far away from this one. It was called the Arcadia Regeneration Company. It was, yeah. See, it's always some big company doing it all. Even in space, even with aliens, it all boils down to a big company. It was a biological engineer working with a large staff of technicians. It was our business to manufacture and supply new forms of life forms to uninhabited planets. 
there were millions of star systems with millions of inhabitable planets in the region at that time. There were many other biological laboratory companies at that time also. Each of them specialize in producing different kinds of life forms, depending on the class of the planet being populated. Over a long span of time, these laboratories developed a vast catalog of species throughout the galaxies. The majority of basic genetic material is common to all species of life. Therefore, most of their work was concerned with manipulating alterations of the basic genetic patterns to produce variations of life forms that could be suitable inhabitants for various planetary classes. The Arcadia Regeneration Company specialized in mammals for forested areas and birds for tropical regions. Our marketing staff negotiated contracts with various planetary governments and independent buyers from all over the universe. The technicians created animals that were compatible with the variations in climate, atmospheric, and terrestrial density, and chemical content. In addition, we were paid to integrate our species specimens with biological organisms engineered by our company already living on the planet. In order to do this, our staff was in communication with other companies who created life forms. There were industry trade shows, publications, and a variety of other information supplied through an association that coordinated related projects. Wow. It just says, you know, that nothing ever changes. As you can imagine, our research required a great deal of interstellar travel to conduct planetary surveys. This is when I learned my skills as a pilot. The data gathered was accumulated in huge computer databases and evaluated by biological engineers. A computer is an electronic device that serves as an artificial brain or complex calculating machine. It is capable of storing information, making computations, solving problems, and performing mechanical functions. In most of the galactic systems of the universe, very large computers are commonly used to run the routine administration, mechanical services, and maintenance activities of an entire planet or planetary system. Is that what our uh, people are trying to do now? Is um, have those computers run administration, mechanical services, and maintenance activities of our entire planet? Okay, based on the survey data generated, designs and artistic renderings were made for new creatures. Some designs were sold to the highest bidder. Other life forms were created to meet the customized request of our clients. I wonder what they used for money. That's what I would have been asking. So what kind of money do you use? Because how would one civilization pay you for to another one? The design and technical specifications were passed along as assembly line through a series of cellular, chemical, and mechanical engineers to solve the various problems. It was their job to integrate all of the component factors into a workable function, functional and aesthetic finished product. Prototypes of these creatures were then produced and tested in artificially created environments. Imperfections were worked out, modifications made, and eventually a new life form was endowed or animated with a life force or spiritual energy before being introduced into the actual planetary environment for final testing. Did you see that? A new life form endowed with animated with life force or spiritual energy. That's the part that Frankenstein did not get right. After a new life form was introduced, we monitored the interaction of these biological organism, organisms with the planetary environment and with other indigenous forms of life. Uh, conflicts resulting from the integration between incompatible organisms were resolved through negotiation between ourselves and other companies. The negotiations usually resulted in compromises requiring further modification to our creatures or to theirs or to both. This is part of the science or art you call 
eugenics. In some cases, changes were made in the planetary environment, but not often, as planet, build, planet building is much more complex than making changes to an individual life form. Yeah, because that individual life form reflects all the other ones. Coincidentally, a friend and engineer with whom I used to work with at the Arcadia Regeneration Company, a long time after I left the company, told me that one of the projects they contracted to do in more recent times was to deliver life forms to Earth to replenish them after a war in this region of the galaxy devastated most of the life on the planets in this region of space. This would have been about 70 million years ago. Hey, isn't that when the dinosaurs went extinct? Hmm. The skill required to modify the planet into an ec ecological interactive environment that will support billions of diverse species was a or speci yeah, species was an immense undertaking. Specialized consults consultants from nearly every biologic biotechnical Technology company in the galaxy were brought in to help with the project. What you see now on Earth is a huge variety of life forms left behind. Your scientists believe that the factitious theory of evolution is an expl explanation for the existence of all life forms here. The truth is that all life forms on this and any other planet in this universe were created by companies like ours. How else can you explain the millions of com completely divergent and unrelated species of life on the land and in the oceans of this planet? How else can you explain the source of spiritual animation, which defines every living creature? To say it is the work of God is far too broad. Every Isby has many names and faces in many times and places. Every Isby is a God. When they inhabit a physical object, they are the source of life. For example, there are millions of species of insects. About 350 million or 50,000 of these are species of beetles. There may be as many as 100 million species of life forms on Earth at any given time. In addition, there are many times more extinct species of life on Earth than, than there are living forms life forms. Some of these will be rediscovered in the fossil or geological records of Earth. The current theory of evolution of life forms on Earth does not consider the phenomena of biological diversity. Evolution by nature selection is science fiction. One species does not accidentally or randomly evolve to become another species, as the Earth textbooks indicate. Yeah, that's what I think too. Okay, and without manipulation of genetic material by an ISB. Okay, so we are going to have to stop right there, which is one page 113. Hmm. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. That was about an hour, and I want to wrap this up so you don't have to sit there and get too bored with me. But um, maybe we will play one more time. Uh, my encounter with my own spaceship will play it one last time. I hope you're there watching. So this was my encounter with a UFO this last week. So here we go. And here, here it is. What the heck is that? Are you getting anything? From yeah. That? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Some kind of UFO thing. Maybe. It's just floating there. Oh, well, I hope you all enjoyed that. That was pretty interesting. But anyway, that was in the evening. It was probably around 10, 10 30, something like that. So anyway, uh, well, with that, remember, go out and do something nice for somebody. Remember, be the frequency you want to receive, everyone. Love you all. See you tomorrow night. Catch you later. Peace, everybody.